David Pinsky, Senior Plastics Campaigner with Greenpeace USA. Well, welcome to WMNF, David Pinsky with Greenpeace USA. I want to start with what are your concerns about disposables and about single-use plastic? Well, thanks so much for having me, Sean. Uh, you know, the, the equivalent of one uh, truckload full of plastic is entering our oceans every minute of every day, year after year. Uh, we're seeing the, the fossil fuel and petrochemical plastics industries wanting to ramp up production of uh, a single, largely for single use plastics in the next couple of decades. And we know that only 9% of all plastics ever created have been recycled. Uh, even more have been incinerated or in our landfills are now showing up in our environments, in our air, our food, and our water. So it's time that we really need to take on this plastic pollution crisis, which is also fuel the climate crisis and eliminate single-use plastics and move to reuse and refill solutions. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people are switching to things that they can just throw away, maybe using plastic containers and then throwing them away rather than risk infection from reusables. But your new report, Reusables Are Doable, says that it's possible to use re reusables and be safe. Exactly. So in our new report, Reusables Are Doable, we're showing that around the world, reuse and refill models have continued to be used or can be used safely during the pandemic. And this is despite the plastic industry's efforts to push widespread disposables. Uh, these reuse systems can instill confidence, ensure strong sanitization or contactless systems for cups and containers that make it both convenient and safe for customers and workers alike. And Sean, just in the last couple of months, we've now seen 130 health experts from 20 countries around the world weighing in on the, the ways to use reusable safely and, and pushing back on that narrative that single-use plastics are safer uh, than, excuse me, than reusables. There are some places where plastic bans uh, have been paused or reusables have been restricted. It, um, what's happening there and do you think that that's a, a good idea? Right, so certainly, um, you know, what we've seen is that in the, 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 toward the beginning of the pandemic here in, in the US that the plastics industry was um, promoting um, some studies uh, that were uh, that where it was claiming that single use plastics were safer than reusables. And so we know this was an industry led effort that was really trying to exploit people's uh, anxiety um, uh, about the pandemic and wanting to keep their families uh, safe. And so what we know is that, um, you know, this is indeed uh, certainly has led to some uh, rollbacks in certain states. So I'm here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So in California, the state temporarily paused its ban on single-use plastic bags. It's now been reinstated. We've seen that happen in some other um, uh, states as well. So Massachusetts was banning reusable bags, has now um, uh, said that, hey, that's fine to go ahead and, and resume reusable bags in Vermont. Vermont moved forward with its ban on, on single-use plastic bags, despite some of these efforts from industry to push back. And I think, Sean, what's really important for folks to know is that uh, the fossil fuel and plastic industries know that their time is limited, that we're seeing more investments in renewables, we're seeing folks that want an end to the plastic pollution crisis and want to move to these reuse and refill systems. Uh, so they're really <laughs> throwing whatever they can at the wall, um, but the public knows that this is not only important to keep our oceans safe, it's important to keep our families safe, and especially communities of color that are on the front lines of fossil fuel and plastics industry and, and, and manufacturing production, um, that this is also a public health crisis, and we deserve better. We're speaking with David Pinsky, the author of Reusables Are Doable. He's a Greenpeace USA senior plastics campaigner, and you're listening to WMNF. David, I wanted to ask if you have an example of a business that's using re reusables and refill systems even during the pandemic and what we can learn from that. Sure, so Sean, one of the most well-known uh, reusable companies out there is Loop, which started uh, just last year in 2019. It's expanded throughout the US. It's starting to expand in the European markets. Uh, and it works with large brands such as Nestle, Unilever, and Procter and & Gamble. And so folks, when they sign up with Loop, they can get a, um, a reusable packaging sent to their doorstep and some major brands uh, you know, such as haagen comes in a reusable container. And then when folks are done with that product, they return the container. Um, and of, of course, all of these companies have already been adhering when we talk again about health and safety to FDA standards 
for sanitization to make sure that these containers can be reused safely uh, for the next customer. And we're seeing large companies here, uh, supermarket chains like Kroger, uh, that are working with Loop to provide this to customers. Of course, even Kroger uh, that, that stands out working with Loop needs to markedly expand um, its investments in reuse and refill. And you know, some others come to mind in Florida Publix um, and, and Winn-Dixie, right? We need to see uh, these companies that are making billions of dollars every year uh, to really markedly shift and reduce their single-use uh, plastic footprint and invest in these reuse and refill systems. And when that happens, Sean, we're really going to see a transformation not just here in the U.S., but around the world. And there's a reusable food delivery system for lunches in India that your report talks about. How does that work and how could businesses in the U.S. learn from that model? So yeah, that system has been around for 130 years now. It's called Dabawalas. And that is where folks largely for their lunches get a lunch delivered to them largely via bicycles. Sometimes folks are moving around on the extensive train system there in India. Um, and that, that comes in a, in a reusable a tin or stainless steel container. And then that is um, of course returned and cleaned. And so that's been a very effective model. It's been around for 130 years. You know, some folks will probably remember the milkman coming to their door. So these aren't new ideas, but what we have seen and you know, the, around the, the middle of the 20th century was a market increase in single-use plastics and you know, this convenience model that was sold to us. But of course, we know now the public health and the environmental impacts of runaway uh, disposable plastics and that need to shift. Uh, and, and in the US here, one of um, the companies we feature in the report, uh, the Wally Shop, uh, has a similar model to Loop where it's uh, delivering uh, reusable containers with uh, grocery staples in them to your doorstep. Uh, and they were inspired by uh, that system of Dabawalas in India. Uh, so I think what's really exciting at this moment, Sean, is we're seeing a lot of innovation, a lot of startups here that are bringing these reuse models to, uh, to Americans throughout the country. And so now really the question is, are some of these bigger brands, are Walmart, Publix, uh, target, are they going to invest in these systems as well um, or find themselves soon obsolete if they don't change with the times? Well, would it be expensive to replace throwaway plastics with reusable containers? So the Ellen MacArthur Foundation uh, put out a great report called uh, Reuse and they found that uh, there's a over $10 billion economic opportunity for companies if they are going to just reduce their single use plastics by 20% and shift to reusable systems. Uh, so that, you know, that's, that's one figure there, but that's not a small chunk of change. And of course, many of these companies are driven by the economics. Uh, so I think there's a huge opportunity here, but it's important, Sean, that we also need to make sure that these systems are affordable and accessible to folks um, in making all levels of income. And, you know, other models that we've seen are bring your own container. Uh, so further up on the East Coast, um, Mom's Organic Market, which is based out of Maryland and operates in states such as Virginia, Pennsylvania, uh, New York, they, they have a, a bulk section where folks can bring in their own containers. And they, they have certain standards. You need to make sure that you clean it before you bring it in. They've continued to operate that model throughout the pandemic. Um, and, and so I think there are some low cost options as well uh, for, for us to be able to participate in this reuse revolution uh, to protect our communities and the planet. Well, David, before I let you go, I want to ask you about another news item. Uh, this month, Greenpeace USA workers announced their intent to unionize. Is that something you can talk about? Well, what I can say is that uh, Greenpeace uh, management has responded, said that they support the effort of workers to unionize. Of course, we um, uh, work very closely with unions um, and are excited to ensure that workers um, are, are part of the solution, not just at Greenpeace, but as we mentioned as well in Reusables or Doable in the report, um, it's very important that we're not leaving behind workers, we're not leaving behind communities, um, and that we really are able to move forward together, especially as there's been such um, a change and, and hardship during the pandemic. Well, David, those are my questions. Is there anything else that people should know about your report, Reusables are Doable? 
Well, I encourage folks uh, to take a look, go to greenpeace.org, check out reusables are doable, how you can take action, not just to be a part of the reuse revolution, but again, when next time you go to Publix, um, or if you wanna call them up because you're social distancing, let them know that you wanna see uh, Publix, you wanna see Winn-Dixie, you wanna see Target, to take action on the plastic pollution crisis, to eliminate single-use plastics and switch to reuse and refill, refill systems. David Pinsky with Greenpeace USA, thanks so much for coming on WMNF. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you.